Hello everyone, welcome to Learn Overflow. In this video, we'll discuss another good problem, that is the path sum. This is an easy level problem, and we'll understand how you can solve this question. Uh, and obviously, this is not a very tough question, but the trick how you solve this question is uh, important. Before moving on, if you haven't subscribed to this channel, make sure to subscribe to Learn Overflow for regular lead code videos like this. The question says we are given the root of a binary tree. So this is the root given to us. and uh, also, an integer uh, target sum. There's a target sum integer given to us. Fine. And we need to return true if uh, the root has a root to leave path. So that adding up all the values along the path equals target sum. Okay. So uh, this is the target. We need. This is a question we need to do. And the question for this is the leaf is a node with no children. Obviously, they explained it to you what the leaf uh, meant to it us. Now, what exactly they're asking us to do is like we are given this uh, exact uh, binary tree where the root is given to us. And obviously binary, you can understand it can, it can have at most uh, two children. We need to find that whether there exists at least one uh, path, at least one path in the sense, a uh, root to leaf path that adds up to our target sum. Okay, so five plus four plus 11 plus two is 22. Fine. So this is the some we are uh, looking at. So the question is how we should do this because uh, if we're some adding five and then we are adding four, but on the other hand, it should be we, we should be adding eight, right? So like in the path we are following, we should be adding different values. So one way can be like uh, you took another variable and passed that variable along with adding the uh, current uh, root val or the current root value we have, uh, keep on adding one by one and end up to the, uh, uh, like the leaf node. And then you find out whether it's a uh, particular or, or, or whether it is equal to a target sum or not that you can do. Alternatively, what you can do, you can have our target sum value, fine. In this target sum value, whatever the target sum is, say over here 22. So whenever you are going for this, like the child nodes, make sure that before like the keep calling the same function the same function given to us keep calling the same function again and again and before like while calling the same function with the left left uh, like the root left or root right make sure to su subtract the current root value so that's uh, 22 minus 5 so that will be the next target sum we'll be looking for in its children fine and then uh, once we are over here the 22 minus 5 is basically 17. Next, we do 17 minus 8 for the right child. Okay. And then we will be doing uh, 17 minus 4 uh, for the left child. So that's what we will be doing for the left child. Now, uh, further, what we will be doing, we will get 13. And then 13 minus 11 for the left child. On the right of 4, there's no one. Next, 17 minus 8 ends up in something like 9. So it will be like a nine minus 13 for the left of eight and nine minus uh, four on the uh, right of uh, eight. Okay, so that's what we'll do. And then we'll do something like uh, five minus one. Fine. And we'll check whether the resultant is equal to zero or not. Okay. If, if uh, or, or like uh, either the resultant, since we are sending it to it, so we'll check whether the resultant is zero or uh, we for the last case when the both the like the one is a lift, leaf, how will you understand leaf, leaf by saying uh, the root dot left and root dot right, both are null. So if it's a lift, we'll check whether this value, uh, like the sum currently we have, is equals to our root val or not. Okay, so whether this equals to our root val or not. So we'll simply check on the uh, last case and uh, obviously in the last case we will not do in the 9 minus a so we'll check whether a 9 is equals to our a 13 or not so this is the case we will be doing for here fine now uh, in that case we got 13 minus 11 so that's 2 so we got whether 2 is equals to our uh, 2 or not like the current root value current root by 2 and thus we find the yes this is a path we find okay this is a path we find once we find a path we are done we're not going to check for the other paths, whether there are multiple paths or not. We are not going to check. What we, we need to do is like once we found a single path that's uh, there in our layer. So once we found a single path, we'll simply say, yes, I found it. So that's exactly what I mean by that. Uh, say in place of 13 over here, we have nine. 
okay let's consider the root value of r is 9 so we can see like there are two paths exactly that ends up to our target sum right so we are not bothered to which path we are following we are rather bothered to whether we have at least one path on okay so that's the idea once you have one path, like uh, on the left of uh, this, on the left of five, we found a path. We'll definitely not go for checking for the right of the path. Okay, so there's no point. So talking about the complexity, complexity is order of height, uh, like the how many heights are there or how many uh, levels are there. So that's the order of height. Fine. So it's pretty simple. So let's quickly look at the code we have over here. Fine. Let's quickly look at the code and. Here you, you can understand how we are doing this. Let's see uh, what we did. We are first checking if the current root is null. Okay, so in case of current root is null, we are returning first because uh, say we just uh, came over here, we got some target sum as well, but then we found out, no, we don't have a uh, value. Okay, we don't have a uh, root anything over here, like at the starting point, fine. In that case, we simply say return first, okay, then. Then this is the important check. What the check is, we're checking if the root dot left is null and the root dot right is null. What that does mean? That means it is the leaf node. Okay, root dot left null and root dot right null, both are null. That means it's a leaf node. And then we're checking the exact condition whether root dot val is sub. So as I said, sub is decreasing again and again. And we're checking whether the root dot val is sub. Once the root dot val we found it as a sub, we know that, hey, we found a sub. That means it's true and we should return true. Whatever, wherever we are, we should keep returning true now. We got our value or we got our desired path. So that's what we got. Then this is the part line uh, or the statement that is actually breaking us into multiple paths. What it is, it is like, see, there's a two function calls are there. One has path, this is the exact has path function is called and the another hash path function with the two function calls being uh, concreted by that or operation. Either this or this, like any of the path, if uh, if any of the path uh, gives us a value or gives us a truth, it will uh, end up in truth and we will not check for the other part. Say by any chance, if a root dot, uh, like the left path gave us a final answer or gave us a desired uh, path uh, or desired true value, then we will we'll not check for the right Okay, we will not go because uh, as you know, the first, if the first thing is got a uh, true, it will not go for the next part. That's how it works there. Uh, so what exactly we are doing in this line? In this line, like, you find that there's two function called over here, you will find root dot left is being passed as a tree node. Uh, okay. And on the other call, you will find root dot right being called as a first tree node. Okay. Now what you're doing? See, this is the exact thing we are kind of doing. That is sum, that is current sum. With that, it is subtracting our root dot val. And the same thing we're doing over here. So what you're doing, we're just reducing our total uh, sum. So in that case, on the particular levels, our sum value becomes same, and we're finding out whether any path has a value or not. So that isn't a big problem for us, okay? So as I said, like after five being, uh, like after five being subtracted in the first step, like 22 minus five is done in the first step. So that's what we, we sent over here, fine. For, so on the left, we have sent uh, 70 and also on the right, we, we have sent 70, but it's going on recursively. So this kept stored uh, in our like uh, function call. Okay, so there's no problem to uh, check whether 17 is there or as we have changed our value or anything happens or not. So these are like the local variables. So there's no problem. Okay, these are local variables. So th this won't be a big problem in our equation. So that's how it works, okay? So as you see, like we simply have this thing, sum minus root value. Without doing that, you could have taken a, like a global variable or a variable after this class, okay? Over here, you get to get a variable and then keep on adding the sum, okay? Keep on adding the sum on uh, various levels to find out whether it the sum is equal to a given sum or not, fine. So this can be done. But uh, that might be a bit complicated. That might end up like someone may get confused. So it's better just keep on subtracting the root value from our sum on each levels, okay? On each, uh, uh, like on each left, right calls, okay? So that's pretty much the solution we have, fine. That's pretty much the solution we have. So uh, you could have uh, broken this down in two steps, like uh, first called uh, root dot left, 
I stored it in a uh, boolean type value and then called root dot write. I stored it in a boolean type value and then you can you could have done the or operation, but that's useless. You can do the whole thing in a single return statement as well. So you should uh, keep learning this statements on pro pro easy easy table problems. Okay, that's really important. So I have this question here, understandable on how you can solve this question. It has a few other versions, few other versions like uh, part sub two, part sub three. So you'll find those videos in my uh, channel as well. Fine. So uh, in those variables, in this version, we keep on uh, like storing the paths, whatever paths we found, like multiple paths are there and whatever paths we found, we'll keep storing them. So those kind of uh, complexities can be in increased. Okay. So that's not a big deal. Now uh, for this question, I hope it is understandable how we can do that. If you have any doubts left, make sure to comment them down in the comments as well. I'll be happy to help you out also. Thank you all for watching this video. Make sure to subscribe to the channel for regular lit code videos like this. Thank you.